three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. This is Hunter here. This is The Real Pineapple. And, oh my god, we have a guest. Uh, this is your first time doing My this. very first time. I'm, uh, and I'm happy we're doing it for a movie that's really great, actually. It, it was a good one for me to start it on. Yeah, uh, Alyssa, hello. Hi. Um, so, <laughs> we, we have had uh, many arguments, uh, just in general, too. But you are a, what I call would call a DC apologist. <laughs> like... Or a non-apologist. Would it, would it, yeah, uh, I'm yeah. an apologist. I pretend movies are good when I know on some level that they're not. Sure. Fair. fair. You know what, though? At least you admit it. So, this is what I'll say about... So, if, if you listen to the podcast for any amount of time, uh, when we reviewed Aquaman on here, I gave it a, I gave it a C+. Plus. Peter! I, I, see, see, that's my problem right there. Because the moment <laughs> I even give anything like below an A for DC movie, that's the first thing I hear is... Oh, like you're a hater. You only like Marvel movies. Like, no, I just like, you know, good superhero movies. And Aquaman, it's I Like, I didn't hate it. Aquaman was quite serviceable. And I maintain if it had come out ten years ago, people would have liked it way better. It's just because Marvel raised the bar so much, people don't do well with just a relatively, you know, brain-dead kind of popcorn superhero movie anymore. But see, that's kind of my, my point, though, that the fact is the bar... And not just Marvel. Like, the bar has just been raised by superhero properties or comic book properties in general so if you do something that's just meh people are kind of like yeah okay like you know what else you got uh granted aquaman made a billion dollars which i still don't fucking understand uh whatever <laughs> but, <laughs> like i i will be the first to admit i saw that and i was like god a billion really like like really aquaman makes a billion dollars i i, I don't know but hey women want to see chase momoa like, he's charming, he's charismatic. I, I, I get it, but... It was all bright and colorful. It was, and some of the effects were really well done. Uh, and others were a little were, bit, you know, not. No, it made me appreciate the rhinos and Black Panther a lot more, because, like, I saw, like, sea rhinos in that movie. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> like, like some of this shit. Because that's, like, the one, like, my one, like, and that's a nitpick at best with Black Panther, like... When you see the rhinos in there, it's like, ooh, okay, shit. Like, these do not look good. Uh, and but, Black Panther, too, a couple shots, like, of the climactic fight at the end with the two CGI Panthers. There were there are a couple that there bu- that, that kind of looked that rubbery bug- to me. See, that didn't bug me. What, not enough what, to take me out of it, but it's there. It's there if you kind of have an eye for that and you're looking to... If you're looking to pick at something, you could you could find a couple shots Well, where, that's fair. But, I mean, there were multiple shots on Aquaman. But I was like, oh, all right, movie. Like, I get it's underwater and you have to do CG, but... Give, give give the visual effects team another, another 30 mil so they can clean something. They probably did. Well, they certainly didn't know it was going to make a billion. Otherwise, they would have. Yeah, I mean, fair point. But now, I thought Aquaman actually succeeded in what it set out to be. And it didn't really try too hard, which I kind of appreciated after some of the other entries in the DCEU. So, was, um, so yeah. I, I had a good time watching that one. I, I don't have too many complaints with that. You know, beyond like it's not... The deepest movie ever made, but again, it's not really trying to be anything like that. I mean, it's not. But what, what I will say about the DC EU is that it's definitely been a uh, it's been a mixed bag. Uh, oh yeah. To, to to be sure, and so going into Shazam, I went, oh, Zachary Levi gets to be a headlining superhero after Marvel did such a great job of using him, which just, which I mean, again, you know, my. My not non-existent Marvel bias aside, that that is something that genuinely pissed me off about the Thor movies. It's like you have Zachary Levi in them, and he's one of the few bright spots in Thor: The Dark World. And then in Ragnarok, he just gets killed like two seconds. So it's like cool. <laughs> I love how Thor: The Dark World, the Thor: The Dark World is just we just don't talk about that one anymore when you're talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's very. True. It's just like you know you talk about the big hits. You know you got Black Panther. You got the first Avengers, you got Winter Soldier, <coughs> the Dark World. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. So, what I'll say is Man of Steel, I would probably give that a B. Um, we reviewed that when it first came out. I think I gave it a B- at the time. 
I probably still want to be on the B minus. I, actually, I think I give C plus. I, I I give the B minus. I think Man of Steel is a really good movie for the first two thirds, but I think the last third, especially just how Superman kill that early, I'm just like, ah, uh, all right, I don't love that, but. Whatever. See, uh, I wouldn't consider this uh, apologia, but I actually really liked the uh, final act of Man of Steel. One, really? I, I loved the action. It's the very first time before, you know, Marvel really hit its stride with the Avengers and all their big events. That is the first movie where you actually got to see, like, superheroes, like, gods among men, really just let loose and just absolutely tear something up in live action. It was almost like straight out of, you know, you know the old... Justice League Unlimited and all that, but, you, you but, know, you would just see like that kind of destruction. So it was kind of, it was really cool for me to see that brought to live action and the effects were, you know, quite good. So um, but see, that's my problem though, is that you have Justice League Unlimited. So the fact that these movies aren't just home runs each time, I'll be honest, it really does bother me because look, like in the same way that Marvel admittedly is, you know, is ahead of DC in live action. Mm -hmm. DC's been ahead of everyone in animated films in superhero realm for oh absolutely, ever. and like, I, I would argue they still put out a lot of they regularly they put out really great animated feature films. I, so uh, recently, like the death of Superman, I wasn't I, I thought it was I haven't seen okay. it yet, but um, Batman Harley Quinn flop pissed me off. I was like, I don't like this at all. And Killing Joke, I, I remember. Uh, okay. I was, yeah, no, Killing Joke, yeah. I wasn't a big fan of. Um, also, uh, the. Uh, what was it? The Aquaman movie. One they didn't animate it. Aquaman. They did. Movie. Yeah. I, it was, a, I, I, thought, I thought it was good actually. I, I don't. I think I thought it was okay. It didn't stand up, you know, to the what I consider to be the great ones. Um, I loved Justice League Dark. That yes, I, was, I, I did too. Although Batman has no reason to be in that he, movie except to put asses in the seat. Yeah, that, that's very. Like, <laughs> but they didn't. Let, they didn't actually. They basically just like, all right, and he's here, and we're gonna actually make the movie about the characters we want to make it about. But the studio said we have to put Batman in here, so just he's gonna stand off to that yeah, side. Yeah, <laughs> give me more Constantine. I, I. I God, I love Constantine. Well, oh. I've always been a huge fan of like the magic uh, sort of users of DC. That's um, fair. Which, you know, actually with Shazam, definitely kind of falls into that thing. So, I, I don't even want to get into the whole thing with it, but basically, like, Shazam was Captain Marvel at a point, and then, like... Captain Marvel side B. Yeah, and then, like, the rights reverted to DC. Like, I'll be honest, I was reading up on it, and I was getting a headache just reading, like, about the rights. I was like, good God, this is complicated. So... Basically, all you need to know is that Shazam is DC, Captain Marvel is Marvel. But what I'll say is I wasn't really familiar with the, So I, I knew about the character, but I wasn't familiar with the character until uh, the New 52 relaunch, which uh, mm -hmm. Jeff Johns wrote. So here's the thing about Jeff Johns. When he writes a character he cares about, they're smash hits amazing comics out of the park mm -hmm. when he's writing something like uh superman or wonder woman it's really not good and you should just not he, read he it. doesn't really much like his paragon characters yeah that that's a really good way to put it yeah like it, it yeah i think that he i think that he has a hard time finding interesting stories to tell with uh that sort of archetype I mean, I mean that's an interesting point like i really do like i really do like john's i i really I do, do. and the fact that there is a lot of inspiration taken from New 52, I went, uh, okay. Like, New like, 52 is, I mean, you were saying earlier, you know, DC, uh, EU, definitely a mixed bag, and that is also true of the New 52. Very much a mixed bag. But but I think Shazam might have been one of my favorite things to come out of New 52, because mm -hmm. I just wasn't familiar with the character, and I went, oh, okay, this, this works. And, well, and it's a very fun original idea, too. Like, there's actually not really a... Uh, like, you know, there's always the analogs between Marvel and DC, you know, where it's like yeah. one was created after the other. And uh, the actual kind of pow power set and, like, the way that the powers are invoked for Shazam is, I can't think of a um, comparison to a Marvel character who has kind of that same sort of setup, I guess. Yeah, I mean... So, it's a very, it's a very neat idea, and... You know, something that's actually kind of original, and you have a lot of... Obviously, there's a lot to play with, as we saw in this movie, when you give a 14-year-old boy the powers of a god. So. Yeah. yeah, so I, I so uh, as we're recording this, I'm in my cosplay Shazam costume. Yes, which, he wore it to the theater. Yeah, so yeah, no shame in my game. I wore my, for, like, my insanely 
spent way too much money on this cosplay costume, Shazam costume, to the theater. Alyssa picks me up and just looks at me and goes, oh god, you're, I'm so gonna have to pretend I don't know you. Yeah, and, I, I wore a shirt with a Batman logo on it, and even I was feeling kind of lame, and uh, so... <laughs> Then he then he comes out looking like that. I'm like, oh well, I guess I have nothing really to worry but, about. But you know what though? I talked to multiple people who were absolutely delightful. Yes, a bunch and, of kids wanted to take pictures with him. Yeah, it was super cute. So I took like seven or eight pictures, so, and including with some theater employees. So to everyone who was super nice, thank you. It was really it was really cool to actually talk to people about it. And as we talked about at the very beginning, oh my god, DC, thank you. More shit like this. Keep this train going because it was very very good thank god because i was just sitting there so this is one thing i do hate like when i sit in a dc movie i'm praying for them to be good not because i i've had people argue with me about my ratings all the time i don't really care but i want these to be good because as i i've told you and i tell people i talk to about these movies Competition is good for the market. When mm-hmm. when DC's doing well, Marvel has to try harder, and vice versa. So I'm I've been like, come on, DC, like let's like keep it going. And, and so going into this, I was just I was honestly praying. I was like, please, I don't want to come on mic and say Shazam sucks, and then have people tweet me and be like hater. And it's like, oh god, like fuck off. Like, I'm just telling you how it is. This was a great movie, and. And, like, uh, there, were, there was a decent amount of kids in our theater. I haven't heard kids that quiet in something in a while, uh, which was, like in, the, like, in a good way. Sorry, go ahead. Something I got to say about that, if you're planning on seeing this and you have, like, super young kids you want to take with you, maybe, like, you know, six or uh, lower, there's a, there's a couple shots in this that are kind of holy shit. Like, that was very violent and gruesome. So uh, just be forewarned. You, you know, you see some people get their heads bitten off in loving detail and you see other people disintegrate before your eyes and while screaming in agony so uh just you know uh i i would have probably been a little bit freaked out if i saw this when i was like five i mean so here's the thing so just just a quick disclaimer but yes uh awesome awesome movie um and yeah everyone everyone in that theater was completely hooked yeah which which is always nice to see when people are just in unison i had a great weekend for movies so i saw us last night which i will not get into here because i'm spoiling it but, but so seeing it, going into this, I really was like, okay, and shout out to Fandango, by the way, for doing this, because this, this came out, this is uh, two weeks before it actually comes out? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like April, uh, April 5th it comes out. So, we got to see this a couple weeks early, again, thank you, Fandango, and really happy that uh, my friend uh, uh, Kalani, oh, KJ, from the KJ and OJ podcast, she told me, hey, Shazam, early screenings, I'm like, oh, shit, okay, so I actually bought tickets for... For me and Alyssa, because as much crap as we give each other, I, I genuinely adore Alyssa. Plus, again, you're a DC fan, so I'm like, okay, she can kind of help me navigate through some of this. Because, again, I'm just not as familiar. And but. I don't know a ton about uh, Shazam or Captain Marvel, but I, I, know, I know a pretty good amount about, like, you know, some of the comic history and some of the stories and the villains, you know. And So, so I mean, do you want to kind of go into the plot a little bit? Like, as far as, like... Like uh, your yeah. plot synopsis. Yeah. yeah, so um, for those of you who do know anything about the comics, the uh, enemy they went with for this one was uh, Dr. Savannah. Played um, by Mark Strong. Yes, looking great. Um, basically, uh, he sort of is vetted by the wizard to get the powers of Shazam. Okay. And because the wizard is kind of a douchebag about turning him down, <laughs> he goes on a vengeance kick. I mean, yeah, so, I mean... To I, I me, kind of got it a little bit. It's like, wow, that was a little harsh. I mean, he, it, it was a little harsh, but to be honest, you can tell this kid, like, this kid screams, like, I'm gonna stab someone with a pencil or something. Well, with his point. fucking family, that's how you breed a serial killer. Okay, so the movie starts with this little kid in the backseat of a car being terrorized by his douchebag older brother and his douchebag dad before being teleported to go and talk to the wizard, and then the wizard is also kind of a dick to him. I kind of felt for the kid a little bit. No, I also, and I will say, I did feel for the kid, because uh, what does his dad say? He's like, you, uh, I actually have it written down here, because I was taking notes. Uh, don't worry, turn my screen down while I'm doing it, <laughs> but he's like, you miserable, whiny little shit, you could have killed us. I was like, good grief, like, calm even, down. Even before that, like, the brother's like smacking him in the head or something, and dad's like, well, you can't always cry to me when you have problems. Yeah, no, that that was an asshole. 